The LumenTop EDC-18 is LumenTop's newest EDC-style light. It borrows heavily from the FW3A that was designed by Budget Light Forums but built by LumenTop. I reviewed the FW3A a few weeks ago, and I'll have a link for that below in the description. The EDC-18 features the same light engine, similar optics, and similar ideas. LumenTop, however, has refined some of the quirks of the FW3A to gear it a little bit more towards a consumer-oriented EDC light. Thanks to Banggood for sending this to me to take a look at and review. A quick word here, if you're watching this video shortly after it's made live, Banggood is having a huge 11.11 .11 day sale on tons of things in their store, including flashlights and other goodies. I'll have a huge list of sales on flashlights and other gear, and a link to that will be in the description below. Included in that is a sale on the LumenTop EDC-18 here if you decide to pick up one of those. Packaging is very similar to what we saw on the FW3A. You get this cardboard slip here that goes around a little cardboard box. Got a picture of the light, tells you what emitter you're using, and that's about it. Inside, you get an additional box here, the light sits here, and then you've got a little bit of accessories here. Accessories included with the EDC-18 is a pretty standard lanyard. You get the light itself, you get this nice deep carry pocket clip, and then you get a glow-in-the-dark diffuser here. And I love this diffuser, it's just awesome. Does a nice job of diffusing the light, and, um, fits on here nice. The diffuser also fits on the um, FW3A. It's not quite as tight on there. It could fall off potentially, but it is available for purchase. If you'd like it separately, it's like three bucks or something like that. The EDC-18 is made from aluminum that's anodized in a smooth eggshell black finish. It's not gloss and it's not uh, matte either. Um, it doesn't show fingerprints or like fingernail marks pretty easily, so it's uh, pretty nice there. Machining here is excellent, no problems there. I did have a little bit of an anodizing error on um, this back here, and then on the inside ring, which I'll put a picture in, it's just a little bit uh, anodized, looks like the masking may have failed. That'll be really easy to clean up with some sandpaper once I'm done with this review, and I think it's a very, uh, not a widespread issue. Starting at the tail cap here, you can see it's pretty much flat, there's just a little uh, indention in there, and the best thing about this is that it is magnetic. And it's a very strong magnet, so I can attach it to my knife here. And you can see it has no trouble holding the light up in a horizontal position or a vertical position. And it stays on pretty tightly. There is a small hole back here for a lanyard. Um, the tail is removable. Threads are square cut, nicely lubricated. You've got your double tail spring in here, is retained nicely. The body tube uh, does is reversible. The clip goes on both directions. The body tube also comes off the head if you'd like it to. I've got some pictures I'll insert of that. This uh, deep carry pocket clip I think is a really nice feature. I'm glad they went with this. Just so you know, deep carry pocket clips are now available for the FW3A too, and I've got to order myself some of those too to try them out. But this pocket clip is pretty good. It doesn't make contact here in the front, so it floats just a little bit, but it's reasonably stiff. Um, I could see this getting caught in bent though, if that's something that's happened to you before. It does rotate around, but it's again, it's tight. Uh, that shouldn't be a huge issue for most people. It does have a little bit of a shelf here, which I typically hate those, but um, I didn't have any problem with it when I edc this one around. The head of the light here has some milling in there for some heat dissipation and to reduce weight, a little bit of style on the sides. You've got a flat um, with the only markings on the light, which is nice. You've got this silicone button here. It is raised a little bit, but not a ton. You've got that green rabbit that you can probably see in there. When the battery's on, you've got a green light emitting from there. Kind of a neat feature. It takes a decent amount of effort to push, but not too crazy. So I don't think this is, this is gonna come on in most people's pockets. You can mechanically lock out the light really easily just by breaking contact, and that's what I'd recommend doing because it's easier. Looking at the front here, you've got this aluminum bezel. This does unscrew. Um, you've got probably got to use a rubber pad or something to do that. Uh, the front optic comes right out the front. This is using um, a Carrillo style optic, uh, but it's not an actual Carrillo brand. This is a Chinese domestic version. Uh, Performance-wise, is very similar. Uh, there is no glass lens that's sitting on top here like there is on the FW3A, so you lose your uh, anti-reflective coating and a little bit of durability, being that that plastic lens will scratch before the glass one does. So a quick note on the modability of this light. Um, the FW3A was a modder's dream with no glue. It was, everything was built to change. 
uh, but this resulted in a light that had a few issues and was a little mechanically fiddly at times. The EDC-18 takes a little different approach. It's got retaining rings both in the head and tail to keep everything tight and in place, and that should improve reliability and ensure your light works out of the package and for a while to come. It's a little bit less moddable. Um, you can remove that bezel, like I said, so you can put a glow gasket underneath here. Um, you can swap out that optic with one that has tritium in it. Um, so you've got some modability options, but not quite as many. It's not going to be nearly as uh, pick and place as the FW3A was in terms of mixing and matching pieces between the different colors, swapping in different LEDs, um, and all the other modding pieces that people came up with. I measured the length of the EDC-18 at 94 millimeters. Minimum diameter at the body tube was 25 millimeters and maximum diameter at the head was 27. Or weight with the included clip and my Sony uh, VTC-6 battery is 120.9 grams. In comparison, the FW3A here in aluminum that I've got on top, using the same battery and clip weighs 98 grams. The FW3A is just a hair shorter in the head and tail, very similar in diameters, but you do have this taper here on the FW3A. I really like this taper. I first uh, had a light that did this was my Overready Boss, and you just it just makes a really nice carry. It doesn't look like much, but it, it really does improve the carry ability of the light. So my example of the EDC-18 is using the Nisha 219C LEDs in about 4,000 Kelvin. This is one of my favorite LEDs and tints, and it's a high CRI. It's just slightly warmer than neutral. That said, it's a hot LED. It's not the most efficient in producing the most amount of lumens. So you trade that high CRI and that tint that you like for overall lumens. That being said, the light's available in SST20 and Cree XHPL high LEDs in neutral or cool white. So you've got a wide variety of emitters, something for everyone. If you're looking for those maximum 2800 lumens, here, go with those Cree emitters. For me, I'll happily trade a little bit of performance for my preferred tint. The beam here is nice, useful for EDC. It's that diffused light. It's not super throwy. It's what I'd expect from a Carrillo optic and you'll see that more in my night shots. Okay, tonight I've got night shots for the Lumentop EDC-18. I'm gonna start off in diffuser mode, and it's just got a little diffuser on top here. You can see the little button there with the rabbit, and it really works nice. I ramps up full andril, so it gets very bright, and this is just diffuser mode here. So, excellent room lighting ability here. I can come down, get it to whatever brightness I want, you can see it does just excellent room lighting ability. The good news about this is it's available for your FW3A as well. I'll have links below on where you can get that on Banggood, and it's only like three bucks. It also glows in the dark, which is really cool. So here is in the lowest mode. This is running the Nisha LEDs, about 4,000 Kelvin or so, and it's got that full ramping ability. That's high, and that's turbo. Obviously way too bright for right at your feet, but as I come down and zoom out here, you can see it does a nice job of ramping. It's a fast ramp. That's high mode, and I can go to turbo, and it does a great job of lighting up the backyard. Again, this is the Nisha LED, so it's a nice pleasant tint, in my opinion. It is high CRI as well. It's those 219C LEDs. Uh, heat's pretty well controlled on this, probably a little bit better than the FW3A, just because there's a little bit more mass here. So on the left here, I have my FW3C. This is running the SST20 LEDs. And this is the um, Lumentop EDC-18, running the Nisha 219s. Tints are fairly similar. The Nisha is a little bit warmer. I, I, I prefer the Nisha myself, but the SST20s are a great choice too. Here is turbo on the EDC-18 and turbo on the FW-3A. Very similar light outputs and it should for the, pretty much the same engined light. Both great options, really nice EDC options as well. Runtime on the EDC-18 was very similar to the FW-3A, which is what we should expect given these light similarities in light engines. I did uh, two runtime tests, the first here showing just the first four minutes on the highest turbo output and you can see the light heats up super fast and almost immediately starts reducing its output. By that four minute mark, the light's stable and ran 
for well over 200 minutes. And this is about five to 600 lumens in that range. And I stopped this test so the graph would be readable, but it was still producing this light at over uh, an eight hour mark when uh, I woke up the next morning. Low voltage protection on the battery kicked in at about 2.87 volts. As with the FW3A, this light works best if you uh, use that ramping firmware that's on here and only bring your light up to the light power you actually need and not over. That way you can minimize heat and maximize overall runtime. And thankfully that's easy to do with the Android UI. As mentioned, this light is using Toy Keeper's Android UI. It's currently one of my favorites available and has a ton of options and neat little Easter eggs that commercial UIs typically don't. By default, the light comes in a ramping mode. So you just turn it on and you press and hold and it clicks to let you know you're at the top double click to go to turbo, click again to go off. And once you're on, you can just press and hold to come down. So you can very easily get what level of light you want just by press, hold, press, hold. If you don't like this, there is a stepped uh, version of firmware that's pretty easy to get as well. And I go into more of the Android firmware in my FW3A review. So make sure you check that out too, because this light has uh, a ton of options like thermal controls, beacon mode, and five types of strobe, including candle mode, party mode, lightning storm mode. They're pretty easy to access. You just tap and hold, or tap two times and hold, and then tap two times to change modes in that group. You've also got things like muggle mode and uh, other things if you're gonna give this light to somebody so it wouldn't uh, be too powerful and potentially uh, burn them, melt their uh, jacket, things like that. Um, you do have lockout on here, four clicks to give you lockout. But like I said, I just prefer to break contact with the rear. So here you can see the lights on and you just have to break contact ever so slightly and the light shuts off and your front button doesn't work. For me, that's way easier. Personally, I find the light here to be easy to use for what you wanna do most often. It's a little bit more complex to get to those modes you probably don't use as more often. This is a UI where you should definitely take a look at the manual and thankfully the uh, Lumentop EDC 18 comes with one. There is a nice graphical manual for the Android firmware that you should also check out that I'll link to below. This isn't a tactical firmware, so if you're trying to use this light in a defensive role, that's probably not its best use. So for me, the pros are that great Android firmware. It's got great extras, including that deep carry pocket clip and diffuser. I like that it's got a magnetic tail. It's most likely more reliable and less fiddly than the FW3A. And it does accept button top cells in addition to flat tops, but no protected 18650 batteries. The cons are it's less modifiable than the FW3A, uh, but in this case, that means more reliable. It's a little bit larger in the head um, and just overall thermal mass. That means a little bit better run times, but uh, you pay for it in weight and carry. And this knurling here just isn't my favorite. It's very smooth. And on other lumen top lights that I've had, I've noticed it picks up and retains dirt and grime pretty easily. So my conclusion on the Lumentop EDC 18 is that this is a version of the FW3A that's designed a little bit more for the mainstream consumer. It trades ultimate compactness and modability for a slight increase in size and a little bit more reliability. What this means is that it's less likely to have problems out of the box, but you're not gonna be able to modify it quite as easily as you would the FW3A. Both lights still benefit from everyone doing a thermal sensor calibration which I'd recommend. The biggest difference here really is if you want a tail switch or a front switch on the head of the light. For me, I like both. Um, I think the EDC, I think for EDC, I prefer the feel of the FW3A in my pocket because it's got that slightly taper, tapered body like I was explaining and deep carry clip once I get mine ordered. It just makes it feel smaller than it really is. That said, there's been times where I miss having a magnet on my FW3A and um, for absolute ease of use pulling out of the pocket, I find that I pull it out and get right on that um, front button. It's just nice, it's easy, it's natural for me. So it's, it's six one way, half a dozen the other. Both are really good options. I don't think uh, there's a bad choice in picking either if you want a triple hot rod. So I'd say get the emitter that you like, uh, get the button that you like, and really enjoy one of these two great lights. As always guys, thanks for watching these videos. I know I'll have coupons for the EDC 18, and if you're watching this soon, make sure you check out the link below for those Banggood sales for 11, uh, the 1111 sales. And as always, make sure you subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.